What moment made you say, yep, I'm definitely dead, but survived with no major injuries? Not me, but my mom before I was born. She was riding in a convertible with a friend of hers. They came to an intersection, and the friend wasn't paying attention and lost control of the vehicle. There was a big rig going through the intersection, and they went right under the trailer. My mom ducked. The driver didn't not. Driver was decapitated. My mom was lucky and only ended up with a scalp full of glass and some serious psychological trauma. She had to get over 200 stitches in her scalp, but nothing else significant. I think about it all the time and think how close I came to never being born at all. I was a senior in high school, and the student club I was in organized an unofficial beach trip towards the end of the year. No teachers or official permission, leaving me and a few other seniors in charge of supervising everything. After a couple hours worth of fun, one of the other students came running up to me and said that three of the younger members of the club had been swept out by a riptide and couldn't get back towards the shore. Me and to other of the older students, all experienced swimmers, immediately went to go help them. My friends got two of the three kids in trouble and started guiding them parallel to the shore to get them out of the current. But the guy I went for was panicking, barely staying above the water, and started dragging me down with him almost immediately. I yelled for people to get a lifeguard and tried to keep both of us afloat, but after a few minutes, maybe five, maybe ten, it felt like forever I was getting exhausted, having trouble keeping both of us above the water, and I couldn't see anyone coming to the rescue. I started getting big mouthfuls of water, and my leg muscles were starting to cramp up, and I remember thinking, holy shaster is tea, I might actually die right here. Right now, as the current started pulling us further and further away from where everyone was, thankfully for everyone involved, one of the students on the beach had flagged down a couple of surfers who made their way out to where we were as quickly as they could and hauled first the younger student and then me onto the front of their boards and took us back. To shore, I'll always be thankful and appreciative for those strangers who put themselves in the dangerous position of rescuing to drowning swimmers. Parachute deployed but failed to open. That was one of those moments then training kicked in, cut away failed shoot, deploy secondary. But for a brief moment life was about to be over in my mind. Tire popped going over a Tulane road. With steep drops on both sides, my car jerked to the side hard and my car went sideways. Half my car hung over the side and luckily, it's slow, so it bottomed out. I climbed into the back seat and jumped out the back door. Some dude in a truck pulled me out and I drove on a flat to the other side and swapped my tire out. Boyfriend finally woke me up. Shortly after, we had fallen asleep in a small upstairs bedroom that had a smoldering fire. After we collapsed on the floor and couldn't find the door, that was not even five feet away, we kept hitting walls and corners and started to not comprehend anything. After feeling like I was baking in an oven, I laid my head down on the floor thinking I'd never see my son again and how sad it was to die. It felt like eternity and felt very lonely. My boyfriend somehow found his phone on the floor, called 911. Fire department showed up in one that felt like two seconds, but couldn't break down the front door. They shined the flashlight up to window so he could kick out the AC unit, which he did. They finally came upstairs and we crawled to them and they took us straight to the burn unit since they didn't know what shape we were in. I'm pretty sure the entire hospital toured through our room since they've never seen anyone make it out and look the way we did. I ate one of those Bratches oval-shaped hard candies. Think they were called sparklets at home alone when I was six. Got stuck in my throat. I stood there in shock for a few seconds as I started to realize I couldn't breathe. I ran crazily around the room and ended up colliding hard into the back of the couch, which caused the candy to go flying out. Best accidental Heimlich ever. I was drunk and running in the woods when bam, 
B-A-R-B wire fence straight to the throat. The last thing I remember, I couldn't breathe and was passing out. And there was blood squirting from my neck. Woke up an hour later and walked home looking like a murder victim. Once as a kid I was in the backyard swimming. While my family was nearby eating dinner at a round table, most had their backs to me. But I was like 11 and an experienced swimmer. I got into a toddler's float with leg holes. It ended up flipping over and I was stuck in it. My legs wouldn't come out of the leg holes. I kicked and thrashed as much as I could, but I was so stuck. And you can't hear someone screaming underwater. So many thoughts ran through my head. Mostly how sad I was that my parents were about to find me dead. In a matter of minutes, and how they'd never forgive themselves for allowing me to silently drown. As they talked with friends, I tried one more time to kick with all of my might. One leg slipped out and I was able to get the other out after. I was fine, totally spooked, but physically okay. On an airplane with my dad on our way home to Britain from Florida. When I was 14, we flew through Hurricane Katrina like literally flew through the thing. It was nothing like any turbulence I've ever experienced in my life. I felt like the ball bearing in a can of spray paint. During the experience, me and my dad looked at each other for a second in a way that meant, we're screwed, but it's been good. Absolutely terrifying and pretty damn relieving after it was over. It has nothing to do with injuries, but I think it pertains to this post. It was the moment I injected heroin into my vein. I knew it was too much about the seconds. After I did it? At that point, it was too late. There was no going back. My girlfriend at the time was in the other room. I had no idea if she was going to come back in time. I knew I was going to overdose. All of those thoughts happened in a matter of two seconds. Then in the blink of an eye, I am in the hospital within four in me, with doctors standing over me. Luckily, as my girlfriend told me later, she came back in the room and I was light blue and cold to the touch. She called 911 and a fire truck had luckily been around the corner. They picked me up. She told me that I had flatlined and they had to shoot me with Narcan to bring me back. After spend 20 minutes at the hospital, I ripped the four out, got dressed, and went out and used again. I am grateful to say that I am two years sober as of last month. When I accidentally got drugged at a party, because I drank the drink of a female friend, I left for home on my own and fell from my bike five times and landed in the bushes next to the road. I threw up everything I had inside me and was so disoriented that I couldn't get up anymore. I slept trough the night in the bushes while it was 13 C out and had multiple occasions where I thought I would die. Called emergency numbers multiple times, but they wouldn't come. And eventually got picked up by a taxi chauffeur that brought me home after laying in a wet bush. For eight hours, I couldn't leave my bed for three days after that. Only thing I'm happy about in that experience is that the female friend didn't drink it and got home safely. I'm a skier. On a few occasions, I have caught an edge at a pretty high speed 50 miles per hour or more. That moment when you feel both skis leave the ground when they're not supposed to is horrifying. Somehow I've never had anything more than some moderate whiplash and a sprained wrist knock on. Wood. In one of my first solo flights, when Cessna's pilot door opened during a turn and my belt was the only thing, between my ass and the ground, 2,000 feet away. My friend put me in a fold-out couch when we were 12. Unaware of how to get me back out because of the weight and pressure on me, I started to panic and scream making it worse. He cut me out of the center of it like a burrito C-section. My friend's stepfather was an extremely abusive drill instructor. The beating he took was terrible, but that's my story. Emergency C-section from a fold-up couch fell asleep driving through the night with my brothers. They were supposed to stay awake and help me stay awake, but were out cold. I woke up as the right front tire kissed the gravel. On the side of the highway, 
ripped the wheel to the left, and managed only to spin out. Weird thing was, while it was happening, I was crystal clear, fully focused, and totally in control, as if time had slowed down, but thinking that we were all dead. I survived a car crash that wrecked my car, rolled twice, landed upside down, learned the hard way that I didn't have airbags, or at least they didn't deploy, did have my seat belt on though. That probably saved me. Paramedic said he hadn't seen a wreckage like that and have it end well. Not even a hairline fracture. I had an idiot friend and we were hiking. We got to this waterfall and he goes, dude, let's climb it. I said, no way. He says, well, I'm gonna do it and if I fall and die, it's on you for not coming. So I climbed it with him. Got stuck halfway up on a slick ass rock. Pinched a nerve in my shoulder. So my right arm was useless. I thought I was certain to slip off the rock to my doom. But we managed to get me unstuck. That was the beginning of the end for that friendship. A really bad flash fire at work where I jumped into a pit. To get away from the heat, I saw the flames roll right over top of the pit. I thought for sure I was going to die. I got some wicked third degree burns, but I lived. I was running down a hill after rain when I was a kid, about eight, and slipped and fell. I jarred my spine pretty bad and couldn't move my arms or legs. I couldn't speak. All I could do was suck in air, whilst making some pretty horrific noises in the process. The teacher sat with me and chewed away all the gawking kids, while she rubbed my back and said nice things, no idea why nobody called an ambulance. Honestly one of the most terrifying hours of my life, though I cannot explain how happy I was when my limbs started working again. Also, when I was about 23, there's an ocean pool near where I live, man-made and during big seas it basically turns into a vortex of hell. Some friends and I went down there and arrived when it looked fairly placid, we jumped straight in and paddled around, as you do. Then the next set of waves started coming in. On the ocean side of the pool, the waves were trying to suck us back out to sea, on the cliff side. It was trying to turn us into mincemeat. I got halfway across the pool when I realized a friend of mine with no experience with ocean swimming was struggling, so went over to help. I made him swim to the middle of the pool, with me to wait for the set to pass, and we managed to get out once it calmed down again. There were some bruises and cuts, but way better than the alternative. The hood on my car came open at 60 on the highway, and completely blocked my sight in heavy traffic. I panicked and jerked the wheel a little bit, which caused me to fishtail a little bit. I kid you not. My driver's education teacher's words from five years prior rang in my head to lean down and look through the, the space at the bottom of the hood. I pulled over and used some wire I found in the trunk to keep the hood closed. Anytime you close your hood, make sure it latches securely by pulling on the hood like you're trying to lift the front of the car off the ground. I went out for a surf on a stormy day and thought to myself, no one else is out, those idiots. Before being held down by two waves, after eating it on the first wave of the set, first wave of the session, was thrown down and held under. And while being tossed around my leg rope wrapped around both my legs and one of my arms. So I was probably being held at around five feet under with only one arm free. While my board tombstone board tip is barely visible at the surface, but floats vertical like tombstone, finally managed to catch a breath between sets, before taking another three or four on the head and for sure, just thought a well this is it, no one's out. Fishermen will find my body or my board, managed to get my other arm free and got to shore very quickly and then avoided the ocean for a few days even though the waves were absolutely perfect. There's a reason no one was out. Everyone else was ten minutes down the road at another beach where the waves were smaller and cleaner.